Welcome to Swish and Flick, an all Potter podcast. Swish and Flick, everyone. The Swish and Flick. Hello and welcome to episode 62 of Swish and Flick. I'm Tiffany. I'm Megan. I'm Katie. (laughs) I forgot to talk. (laughs) Okay, cool. I forgot to talk. This episode is sponsored by Teal Morris. Thank you, Teal. Thanks, Teal. Thanks. Today we will be discussing chapter 20 of Harry Potter and the Prisoner of Azkaban, The Dementor's Kiss. Dun, dun, dun. So make sure you've read the chapter and you're ready to get Nice and uh, detailish, if you will. Yeah. Yeah. Backstroking, front stroke, the butterfly. What a <laughs> breast stroke. <laughs> Doggy cannonball. paddle. Doggy paddle, cannonball, whatever you want. Pencil dive. I don't care. All right. <laughs> We're going to get into the details. So, Megan has some weekly profit news. Megan. Uh, so first up, it's Katie and mine second anniversary, so that's exciting. Yeah. I mean, not right now while we're recording, but while you're listening, it is. <laughs> um. So, yep, yeah, that's cool. And just for everybody who cares about our trip to uh, over to Europe tonight, we're staying at the Balmoral for our anniversary, which is where J.K. Rowling wrote the final book. And we'll be having afternoon tea. Yeah. So, as I sip my honey tea right now. Oh, aren't you special? Mm-hmm. <laughs> but on Harry Potter news. That's Harry Potter news. <laughs> it is Harry Potter news. Um, so, last year they started doing a Christmas dinner at the Great Hall at the Warner Brothers Studio Tour. And they're bringing it back this year. You can have Christmas dinner. Um... And also then have dessert at the, at Platform 9 and 3 quarters. So they like do dinner in the Great Hall and then take you to Platform 9 and 3 quarters and you get dessert. Do you Um, think they're the Christmas crackers? I think they do. What? So they deck out the Great Hall to be like the Yule Ball. Um, Ooh! Yeah, and then the room will be decorated with massive Christmas trees, dripping icicles, and a ton of fake snow, as well as famous props from the iconic films. Um, then you get a two course Christmas dinner, like I said, dessert on platform nine and three quarters. And then also Hogwarts castle will be covered in snow. And actually, even if you just go to the studio tour from, I want to say November 17th to like the end of December or the middle of January or something like that, Hogwarts castle is covered in snow. So Very cute. How do they get that off again? Do they just, Tickets? like, take a giant vacuum? Yeah, I don't know. Very I would imagine, yes. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, I don't know. Um, like a thing that then... looks like a leaf blower. <laughs> Playing with a leaf blower. What was that from? That's SpongeBob. Oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I thought you were making fun of me. I was no, like, sorry. I was like this? I knew that, but I was on mute. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. All right, so tickets go yeah. on sale for Hogwarts christmas dinner um september 25th so they'll already have gone on sale by the time you hear this but you can still buy tickets i'm sure that i think they do it for two nights um so if you live over there or you're gonna be over there check it out and do see it. if you can go have christmas dinner at hogwarts do it mm-hmm. what else that's it that's all I got. Recap! <laughs> <laughs> no, episode's over. That was it. Yeah, We're done. It. We're skipping this chapter. All right. So last time we have Sirius, Remus, and Snape all quarreling like old married, cu- married couples in the Shrieking Shack. <laughs> uh, Snape gets knocked out and Sirius and Remus are finally able to show the trio that Scabbers really isn't a rat. He's actually Peter Pettigrew. They're telling the truth here. So the truth comes out and Remus and Sirius are about to kill Pettigrew when Harry stops them. He doesn't want his dad's best friends to be murderers, and he wants to hand Pettigrew over to the Dementors instead. So, 
we ended with them starting back through the tunnel back to the castle so they can clear Sirius's name. Oh, everything feels so good right now. Mm-hmm. <laughs> oh, yeah. Let's wreck it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna wreck it! <laughs> okay. So the gang leaves the shack and the tunnel, but uh-oh, it's the full moon, and Mr. Mooney didn't take his potion that night, so it's super-duper-duper not safe. <laughs> <laughs> He begins to transform, and it is the catalyst for events. Peter gets away, Ron gets knocked out, um, Snape has been knocked out for the entirety of this time, Um, and Sirius is in his animagus form, runs after Lupin, ends up practically making out with the Dementors, (laughs) who make sure to eat some rotten fish just for him. And at the last minute, Harry thinks he sees something unicornish and somewhat familiar, but isn't sure before he passes out. Mm. Dude, loaded. Mysterious. Yeah. Doesn't Sirius know if you're gonna like plan to kiss somebody, you should also be eating what they eat so it cancels out? Like he should have had some rotten <laughs> fish too. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. Oh, me a coke. <laughs> All right, this crew. Let me tell you. Like, just picture them strolling out of the window. We've got Crookshanks, Lupin, Peter, Ron, Snape, Drifting Creepily, Sirius, Harry, and then Hermione. All just strolling through the tunnel. <laughs> and so they said getting through the tunnel wasn't easy. Um, Lupin, Peter, and Ron had to turn sideways to get through because they were so tall. And they were like edging awkwardly, like in a single file. Um, Sirius was controlling an unconscious Snape. And he kept, quote, He kept bumping his lulling head on the low ceiling. (laughs) Harry had the impression Sirius was making no effort to prevent this. Of course he wasn't. True. It shouldn't be funny. I'm sorry I'm laughing. (laughs) It's not, though. It's not. It's not. The first time I read it, it was funny. (laughs) But again, I'm learning that that's not actually funny, Sirius. Yeah, that's not nice. (laughs) No, but I mean... I think it had they been switched around and I think Snape would have done the same thing. I agree. Yeah. Um, Sirius was very happy about what was going on. He was excited about the fact that he was going to be a free man once Peter was turned in and the real story came out. Sirius um, goes into telling Harry that he is his godfather, which, you know, Harry already knows. But he starts to tell Harry that if anything were to happen to Lily and James, then it would be him to take care of them. And then he asks in the most serious way possible um, (laughs) if Harry would like a different home. And I thought, like, this was one of the cutest things that happens with Harry, I think. Mm -hmm. It says, quote, some sort of explosion took place in the pit of Harry's stomach. What? Live with you? And as he says it, he, like, cracks his head on some low-hanging rock. (laughs) Classic Mm -hmm. move. (laughs) But, like, think about the just the pure joy in that moment when he's like, I could have a different life. Yeah. Yeah. I could be in the wizarding world all the time. Mm Mm-hmm. With my Uh, parents' uh, best friend. You know what I mean? Like, a real connection to his mom and dad. Yes. Ugh. It just... It hurts my heart. Mm-hmm. Sirius um, takes that, though, as that Harry doesn't want to live with him because of the way we, he said it. And this makes me think of when they first encountered Sirius in the shack and he wasn't, like, explaining himself, like, right off the bat. He just kept saying, like, these things that could still mean that he wants to kill Harry. Yeah. I'm like, why don't you just communicate? <laughs> he, yeah. All right? I mean, in his defense, though, like, how long has it been since he's had to communicate with anybody, right? Mm. Talks to Crookshanks. <laughs> yeah. Baby steps back to talking to humans. Yeah. But of course, we know that, duh, yes, Harry wants to live with him. And it still breaks my heart to this day that uh, it doesn't happen. What? Yeah. Hey, here we go. God, can so, you imagine like how different everything would have been? Even if everything like turned out the way it did, he still would have had, like, you know, that time. Yeah. With him like to a be real like happy. Family. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. So I just wanted to read a little bit of Harry from the chapter during this part. 
says, are you insane, said Harry, his voice easily as croaky as Sirius is. Of course I want to leave the Dursleys. Have you got a house? When can I move in? <laughs> He's so happy. And Sirius basically still can't believe it. And his gaunt face breaks out into a huge smile, a true smile. And this is pretty much the first time that Harry is seeing this. And it makes him look 10 years younger. Uh-huh. And... It looks like the same man that is smiling and laughing in his parents' wedding photos. Mm. And I think, you know, you get to see, because you get to see that handsome side of Sirius, as he's always described. Right. Um, Because happy to me, um, I don't know, kind of leads you to being, like, attractive on the outside. So if you feel good on the inside, you'll feel good on the outside, too. And I think Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. him smiling like this, just, oh. Hurts my heart. Oh, so, no. at the end of the tunnel, Crookshanks darts out first and presses the knot on the tree like a good little measle. And only the only lights on the grounds are the distant lights from the castle. So they set off towards it. And um, Lupin, I said, should have sent his Patronus up, up, Patronus up to Dumbledore, but he doesn't want to cast it. Yeah. yeah. Like, wouldn't that have been like oh. a, a really good thing to do? Yeah. Game changer. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, Peter was whimpering and wheezing occasionally, and I thought, get over it, you're horrible and gross. <laughs> <laughs> and Harry's mind is buzzing. He's so excited about the opportunity to go and live with um, Sirius, and he's wondering what the Dursleys would say when he told them that he was going to go live with the convict they saw on TV. <laughs> I love that pullback from the beginning of the book. Mm -hmm. Exactly. I love it. She just ties pieces together so perfectly. Um, Meanwhile, Lupin is threatening Peter that if he makes one wrong move, his wand was pointed at his chest. And so they kept going. And here's where everything sucks. Yep. A cloud shifts and they're bathed in moonlight. What's the problem with that? Well, you know, you know well, it's the state of the moon. Chicka chicka boom boom. Look, there's a full moon. <laughs> <laughs> I still don't understand the whole like. It's only because the moonlight hits him. So like, what if he's somewhere where you never sees moonlight? So he's not transforming that month. Now I have. I wanted to talk kinda, about this too. I kind ahead. of always envisioned that it was just like good timing that the cloud moved at that time and that's just when the moon was at its highest at that point so like regardless it kind of would have happened but just for theatrics she says the cloud shifts and they're bathed in moonlight but like i think regardless of if that cloud had shifted so do you think it has to hit like a certain point because this i mean if we're talking about like his transformation as soon as the moon's out. You know what I mean? Right. Like, I don't does it think have that to hit? Yeah. I think it has to be at its highest point in the sky before it will. And now, if it's lower and he's out in the moonlit hit. So, okay. So, this is another theory. Sorry if this is what you were going to say. But another theory could be. So, no matter what, when the moon is at its highest, a werewolf will transform. That's theory one. Or it could be in this situation that he hadn't transformed yet because maybe before the moon is at its highest, if the moonlight hits you, you transform. Do you know what I mean? So like, it's not quite there yet. So that's Mm -hmm. why the moonlight hitting him mattered. But had he just been, I get it. Yeah. So like, had he just been in his office at this point in time with all the windows closed, he maybe wouldn't have transformed yet because the moon wasn't at its highest, but because he's outside Mm -hmm. and he gets touched by the moonlight, he transforms. I don't know. That's, I feel that. What does our werewolf expert say? Well, I never know if this is... I think I brought this up before, and I'm kind of asking Meg, because for listeners who have listened for a while, they know that we have our own story and concept in our head, but I don't know if this is something we made up, but, like, is it true? I don't know if I read it somewhere, that if you take the Wolfsbane potion after a long period of time... We made, we made that up. Okay, well, that's kind of cool. Maybe that's true. If you take the long... If you take the Wolfsbane potion a certain length of time you won't transform unless the moonlight hits you. I just thought that kind of made sense. Whenever we were coming up with our loop and story, mm-hmm. I thought that it would be cool and possibly true, like what Kate said. Yeah, like, say he's taking the Wolfsbane potion for years, right? 
So, mm-hmm. like, once you hit a year of taking it consistently, you won't ever transform unless you're touched by moonlight. But that's mm. just that's just headcanon for me. I don't know if right. that is, like, backed up anywhere. That's just kind of something that we've thought of, potentially, that could be with the Wolfsbane potion. Food for thought. Yeah. Cool. I don't know. An idea. But so, I like what you I like what you guys Well, say. I would love to to hear what our, um our, our listeners think. Swishers, hello. Yeah, tell, tell us. Tell us what you think. Yes. So the moonlight bathes them and then Lupin immediately goes rigid and his limbs begin to shake. So obviously he's transforming. I wanted to talk a little bit about the difference of the potter werewolf compared to like other werewolves in horror films and stories oh i like that and i found this really neat article on pottermore um that really talked about like the on-screen vision of lupin so it's established in prisoner as we know we've talked about it already already that remus was bitten as a child by where by fenrir um, so and bitten by a werewolf. Yeah. As, <laughs> an, as an adult, he's able to take the Wolfsbane potion to control his condition, but he still struggles with the shame and weight of his secret, which the filmmakers brought out through costume and makeup. So with more than a hundred werewolf transformations filmed throughout the history of cinema prior to Remus Lupin's, the visual development artists for Prisoner of Azkaban were eager to give this iconic character a fresh approach. Inspiration came from depicting Lupin's condition as an illness. To that end, his pallid face and scarred body mark his struggle against the affliction, and his gray, shabby clothing add to the idea that he has faced much hardship. So Lupin's werewolf form isn't meant to be as scary as conventional movie werewolves. Um, There's a gravity and a sadness about him, which you can definitely see from, like, his specific werewolf vision that we see in the movies. Um, His makeup design is lupine, but retains some of his humanity, which kind of weirded me out. I think the first time I saw the movie, I was like, oh, that's what they're envisioning. But, like, now that I understand more of, like, why they did that, I think I like it more. Mm -hmm. Um, So his werewolf form is thin and disfigured, almost emaciated. Is that how you say that word? Yeah. Yeah. Um, with long limbs and a hunched back. And one significant change from most movie werewolves is that Lupin is relatively hairless. Yeah. And I, and I think oh, that. Sorry, they... I like yelled that. <laughs> it's okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hairless. All right. <laughs> but I think that they did that to remain that hum to remain like the yeah. humanity feeling yeah. of the werewolf. They should have given him a mohawk. I think he, I think that they could have given say. him a little more because like at least I, I don't know I think that they could have gone with a little more hair but you know I get why they did it yeah um, so the creature designers began with the hope that they'd be able to achieve the werewolf transformation practically because I know if any of you have listened to Katie and mine's um, celebration of Harry Potter episode we talked about how this past year they really talked about their visual effects and how they tried to do everything practically. Like, anything that they could do without CGI, they wanted to do it that way. Um, Including, like, the letters shooting in the door for Sorcerer's Stone. And um, Professor Umbridge, whenever she was, like, steaming, like, she actually had an outfit on that, like, made steam come off of her. Yeah. Uh, Or smoke, whatever. Steaming? Whatever. <laughs> the gobble to fire was a practical effect. Like, those kinds of things. I so thought they... she was steamy. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So they wanted to... <laughs> okay. So they wanted to make the werewolf transformation practical as well. Um, so they used a lot of prosthetics on David Thewlis and also combined that with animatronics. That's super cool. So they sculpted the werewolf they wanted without worry about how they'd install someone to control the sculpt, because it was literally just going to be an animatronic, like, without a person controlling it. Um, and the result Ooh. was an extraordinary creature that was extremely tall, seven feet tall, to be exact, Ugh. and extremely thin, and would require a performer with a unique skill set who could fit inside. So I guess they did. So they didn't try and build it around David Thewlis. They just, like, built it so somebody potentially could fit in it. 
Um, Dang. So a kickboxer and a dancer were cast and trained for several months wearing three-foot-tall reverse stilts to give them the necessary height and stride. And when they were brought to the actual set featuring the Whomping Willow, it became apparent that the performers could not achieve the same effect they had in rehearsal. The costume, oh. <laughs> the costume was tight and restrictive, not allowing the creature to be as athletic as desired. And additionally, as the scene's set was an un, was a hillside. I don't know how to say right. that word. So it was hilly, strewn with rocks, tall grass. The performers just like they couldn't keep their balance. They couldn't move quickly across the terrain. Oh, can you imagine? I know the poop show that this would have been on set. Yeah. People were probably so mad. Yeah. yeah. I want to oh. see the, like, rehearsal of this in the, the room, we not might, on the grass. We might get to see the animatronic, which would be awesome. Oh. It might be at the studio tour. I can't I will handle that. die. So it was determined that the final werewolf scene on screen would need to be created by a computer. Power to them for trying, though. But can you mm. imagine? They had to have put so many resources, uh, so much money into that. They got Sorry. <laughs> so that um that reminds me of Star Wars. Like when I watched like a documentary of them making stuff, like mm-hmm. um with like Jabba, like there's people inside of that. Like I didn't That's I didn't crazy. know that. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I know that. Um. Oh God, don't yell at me, Tiffany. George Lucas. What? George Lucas. Never mind. I almost forgot his name. Um, George Lucas kind of <laughs> <laughs> he. The Harry, the the directors and everything who did Harry Potter remind me very much of George Lucas because they wanted to do everything practically. Like George mm-hmm. Lucas was a huge supporter of practical effects because you know yeah. it looks. I mean, so usually it will just look more real. I mean, so. honestly, when I um, watch the remastered Star Wars, I'm like, yeah, I know. And then. Um, I mean, think about Jaws. Think about how awesome that yeah. is because of the animatronic. Like, people were flipping out uh, Jurassic Park animatronics. And they're amazing. Like, they terrified people. Like, yeah. that scene where the T-Rex comes through the sunroof of the Jeep. Yeah. That wasn't supposed to happen. And her screams are authentic. Like, <laughs> that's how real these things are. Right. So, it really is awesome that they tried to get that same effect. Um mm-hmm movie still turned out fine i mean it did whatever. i mean it still looked great but yeah yeah i mean like but whenever it, it just makes the acting better too because they're not looking at like a green ball on a stick right they're actually mm-hmm. looking at an actual thing so they can act better i mean that's what made like the aragog scenes so good because yeah. those are like i mean because ron the dog, like rupert was terrified and yeah so was the dog that played fang he like wouldn't go near him <laughs> yeah which i mean that scene looks legit yeah i hate it um <laughs> <laughs> One last thing in this article. It says, up until Lupin completes his transformation, though, they did use as much practical makeup effects that they could on David Thewlis. So he was fitted with several stages of prosthetics that changed his eyes, teeth, and hands. Um, and then other effects included a cable-controlled piece under the back of his coat that expanded to rip the material. Oh, nice. um, and bladders on his neck that inflated... So visual... Why are they called bladders? I don't know. It's <laughs> probably because probably bladders expand. Yeah, I would say. Come on. Call them bladders. So visual tricks included a cutaway shot of the actor's feet elongating and stepping out of his shoes. And all of this is from the Harry Potter the Creature Vault book that is, like, in, on Amazon. And I've seen it at Target. And so, like, this article is from that, just so everybody knows where it came from. It's on Pottermore as well, but, like, there's more creature effect stuff in that Creature Vault, creature vault book. And probably fun yeah. pictures. Yeah, probably. Yeah. Yeah. All right, but back to the chapter. So, <laughs> <laughs> after Lupin begins transforming, Sirius is yelling at them to run. Actually, he whispers to run because he's, like, can't believe that this run. is happening. Run, run, run. run. Um, but Harry... And Hermione couldn't, because they're like, uh, Ron, he's chained to Pettigrew and to Lupin, like, what's gonna happen? They're freaking out about it, so I wanted to read, like, the transformation from the book, because again, JK's words are gold. 
Um, there was a terrible snarling noise. Lupin's head was lengthening. So was his body. His shoulders were hunching, hair sprouting visibly on his face and hands, which were curling into clawed paws. Crookshanks's hair was on end again. He was backing away. As the werewolf reared, snapping its long jaws, Sirius disappeared from Harry's side. He had transformed. The enormous, bear-like dog bounded forward as the werewolf wrenched itself free of the manacle binding it. The dog seized it about the neck and pulled it backward, away from Ron and Pettigrew. They were locked jaw to jaw, claws ripping at each other. Yes, Tiffany. Um, I'm just thinking of Crookshanks and his little adventures on the Hogwarts grounds, and he is like... Like, I wonder if he ever tried to go into the Willow before yeah, Sirius was there. I wonder if he, or because Sirius told him, or if he got close enough, or... Maybe he still Because it would have been, it would have been really sad if they had met each other, you know, if, if Lupin got out or anything. Oh, God. I know. I know he doesn't go out of the willow, but... Or he doesn't... Out of, well, Lupin also yeah, isn't still. interested in animals, though, when he's a werewolf, right? True. Yeah. But, so, I, but I just wonder, because he's so small. Yeah. You know? Well, Peter would run around yeah. with them. True. I don't know. Um, Did you have anything else you wanted to say? I was dumb. Oh. No, say it. <laughs> <laughs> I said it. I was going to say maybe because he's going through all this stuff, he would just want to wish he was still back at the Magical Menagerie and <laughs> never adopted. Aww. Aww. <laughs> I don't know. I think I he likes it. his adventures. I think so, too. Um, so what I wanted to ask you guys here is, like, so it says here they were locked jaw to jaw, claws ripping at each other. <laughs> so, oh, first of all, hashtag Wolfstar, right? Right. <laughs> um, <laughs> Um, second though, like, how, it, so if they're fighting like this, like, how did Sirius never get contaminated with, like, werewolf Maybe bite? because he's transformed? Maybe I don't know. That's what I would think. But, like, well, for, no, like... but, no, but listen, hold on. Sorry, I don't want to, like, yell at you, but listen. Listen, Linda, no, Linda, but... Linda, listen. Listen, now you listen up here. It says here, claws ripping at each other, and whenever, um, whenever they run away, like, Sirius has cuts, all he's bleeding. You can be scratched and not get contaminated. I know, but they don't heal properly. No, they don't. I mean... <laughs> Symphony. Right? They, <laughs> they um they don't they don't heal because no. like you can just get scratched like just a little scratch like on your arm from werewolf and like it you need serious help from like a <laughs> from well, like a he's himself and he can just help himself. I just find it weird that he's never like he doesn't have werewolf tendencies he didn't get from getting it but I know things. exactly what the reason is. What? It's because Joe wanted it that way. <laughs> you don't. I was get, gonna say magic. You don't <laughs> get contaminated or infected from a scratch. But it says that they're scratch. locked jaw to jaw. But it doesn't say he was bit. You can have jaw action <laughs> without getting bit. Can you? Yes. Did you see in the movie? They do a really good job of this fight scene in the movie, and yeah. he doesn't get bit though. But I'm I, I saying it's crazy something... he didn't. I agree I with just you. find it surprising. And it's very lucky yeah. that he didn't. Because I think even transformed, because he's an animagus, had he gotten bitten in dog form, it, it's the same thing. Yeah. I would think. But what, what I gonna, digress. What were we going to say, Sarah? I just think it's because he is an animagus that he doesn't... Yeah. You know, That's my maybe. doesn't affect him as much. Thought. That's a good enough answer, I guess. Um, so... <laughs> well, I'm sorry. <laughs> Let me okay. call Joe. I have her on speed dial. We'll have a conversation. She gets really sick of me asking Dear Joe questions, so it's been a minute since we've had a conversation. Maybe but, uh, but maybe you know. we'll run into her in Scotland and I'll ask her. I'm sure she would love that. <laughs> I know. Um, so, Pettigrew dives for Lupin's wand, um, and then, like, ugh, huge series of events happens in like a second. Ron gets knocked out by some spell that Hermione and Harry don't recognize. 
Crookshanks flies through the air and just, like, lands in a heap. Harry disarms Peter, but it's too late, and he transforms and scurries through the grass away. Like a... Yep. Pretty much. So, Harry yells to Sirius that Peter's gone, and Lupin bounds off into the forest and Sirius follows him. Yep. Yeah. Bad. What? <sighs> it just keeps Bad tweet. Works, you know? Bad tweet, y'all. So, Bad tweet. Harry and Hermione have a moment where, like, there's nothing they can do for Ron right now because, like Meg said, they have no idea what... Yeah, Pettigrew he's, like, did. half awake. Like, he's, like, his eyes are half open. His mouth is, like, hanging open. He's breathing. He's clearly still alive, but... Yeah. So they're, like, we can't do anything for him right now. We have to go... We have to help Sirius. Because right now, Harry's, like, everything about that he's known about Sirius has changed. He's gonna live with them. Like, again, this is a connection to his dad. Um... And poor Ron, though, because this is the second time he's getting left behind (laughs) for the other two to go on and do whatever. He's going to get left behind again. Again. (laughs) (laughs) This is the common theme. Just when you think this book is over, here we go. (laughs) So Harry sets off at a run. Hermione's right behind him. And Harry starts feeling cold without realizing what it means. So they had heard Sirius yelping because obviously he's chasing after a werewolf fighting with him. But they hear it stop abruptly. So they reach a lake shore, and Sirius isn't a dog anymore. He's a man. He's crouched on all fours. He's got his hands over his head, and he's just moaning, like, no, please. Um, so then Harry realizes what's going on. I just wanted to read it from the chapter. And then Harry saw them, dementors, at least a hundred of them, gliding in a black mass tor- around the lake toward them. He spun around, the familiar icy cold penetrating his insides, fog starting to obscure his vision. More were appearing out of the darkness on every side. They were encircling them. So this is terrifying. Yeah. To put it yeah. lightly. Especially for Harry, who is more affected by these than anybody we know. Um, so he yells to Hermione, like, think of something happy. I mean, she's never tried the Patronus charm as far as we know. I don't think she would ever even think of trying it because it's extremely advanced magic. That's probably like seventh year stuff, yeah, right? at least. Yeah. Um, I would assume. And he tries to think of nothing but Sirius. He just keeps thinking, I'm going to live with my godfather. I'm going to leave the Dursleys. He's going to be okay. Um, So he starts shouting Expecto Patronum. He can, like, start hearing that faint screaming of his mom in his head. He just keeps thinking about Sirius. Hermione can't do the spell. First of all, she's probably never attempted it. Second, it's super advanced. Third... And this is, like, in the moment. Right. In the moment. This is scary. Like, what she's, like... Like, I know she saw, um, like, her worst fear or whatever with the bogger with McGonagall or whatever, but, like, what are they making her see and right. feel? Right. Mm. That's a really good question. Because it's probably way more than McGonagall. Dear Joe. Oh, yeah. Dear Joe. Yeah. Um, so Harry does manage to conjure up a small wisp of silver. And then, so it's just keeping the Dementor that's close to him at bay. Um, Hermione collapses next to him. Oh. He's all alone because Sirius, like, rolled over and collapsed as well. Um, but still he doesn't give up. Here's our little Gryffindor. He even drops yeah. to his knees, but he's still holding this silver mist in front of him. So there's a Dementor that halts really close to him, <laughs> but it can't get through that kind of Patronus that he's conjured. Mm -hmm. So then we see a dead and slimy hand slide out from under the cloak, and it made a gesture as though to sweep aside the Patronus. So things aren't looking too good for Harry right now. Yeah. I forgot what I was going to (laughs) say. That (laughs) fast. What was I going to say? Dead and slimy hand. Silver mist. No. If I think of it, I'll raise my hand again. <laughs> That's the life of a podcaster. <laughs> I won't uh, let you speak, so because it's blue oh, now. Good. Okay. Okay. Right. Yeah. Great times. <laughs> okay. So we know that uh, everyone around the lake. Yes. I remember. <laughs> <laughs> so first time reading this uh, as a kid, essentially, I don't know how old I was, but um. I remember thinking, okay, I know Harry's not going to die. Yeah. But I didn't know about Sirius and Hermione. Yeah. Like, I was really afraid for them. 
but I, I, I really felt like I knew Harry wasn't going to die. Go ahead. I felt like at this point in the series, I was like, because when I read this book, I was 11. Um, so I'm reading it and it's again. Yeah, I was like, well, this isn't going to be the end for Harry. But like thinking in my head, it's like this could be the first time in the series that like something bad happens. Right. You know? She could have she could have killed them. Like, a we, ma- yeah, she could have killed Hermione. Mm-hmm. Didn't she almost kill Ron at some point? In yeah. In the seventh book. Thought about it, yeah. Oh, really? I thought it was earlier. Oh, maybe it was earlier. I thought it was, like, the she fifth. Also... Oh, I think it was the fifth in the the Department of Mysteries. I think she, she thought about it. She also thought about killing Arthur, right? Yeah. That was the seventh. Yeah. Arthur was the seventh book. She just doesn't He's... like those Weasleys. He, mm. he made it out just by the skin of his teeth. Let's be real. By <laughs> the skin of Remus Lupin, actually. Oh, <laughs> honestly, good butt. <laughs> <laughs> that was a burn, dear well, Joe. Okay. All right, Sarah, I'll let you go. Hashtag, I'm mad at you still. <laughs> <laughs> so we know that everyone around the lake is in jeopardy because the Dementors are attacking, and nobody is able to cast Patronus effective enough to scare them scary things away. So Harry's trying to protect Sirius and telling uh, the Dementors that he's innocent, but we all know they don't care. And uh, Harry can feel them watching him. They can hear his, uh, he can hear their breath. And it says like an evil wind around him. And there was a Dementor that was close to him. It raised its rotting hands and lowered its hood, which makes me want to vomit. So in the book, this is how it says. Where there should have been eyes, there were only thin, gray, scabbed skin stretched blankly over empty sockets but there was a mouth a gaping shapeless hole sucking the air with the sound of a death rattle oh i legit have chills and like the death rattle is a real thing and it's horrifying yeah um so Harry's paralyzed with fear. He couldn't move or speak, and his Patronus flickered and died. White fog was blinding him. He had to fight. Expecto Patronum. He couldn't see. And in the distance, he heard the familiar screaming. Expecto Patronum. He groped in the mist um, of Sirius and found his arm. They weren't going to take him. But a pair of strong, clammy hands suddenly wrapped themselves around Harry's neck. When I like first read that bit, I was like... I know. Are you going to like strangle him? <laughs> I know. Ugh. This is gross because it's mm-hmm. like a very personal thing that's about to happen. It's like very, like, very like upfront in your face. Yeah, like, like I'm very deliberate about mm-hmm. when I'm gonna take your soul. Yeah. <gasps> so they were forcing his face upwards. He could feel its breath. Ugh. It was going to get rid of him first, and he could feel its putrid, putrid breath. His mother was screaming in his ears, and she was going to be the last thing he ever heard. The thing he cares most about. It's I think. just. Oh, yeah. Sad. So, um, so then I figured there's an article on <laughs> my poor Potter of Moore. So let's talk about smooching. <laughs> let's talk about kissing, baby. Yeah. So let's talk about those nasty dementors and what it means to smooch them. So the article kind of like breaks it down. And the first thing it's like, so like how just how bad is it? And so it's like, imagine the worst game of Kiss Chase. And we talked about this in another episode. And Kiss the Internet. And then someone else commented on our Facebook page that Kiss Chase is a game kind of like tag where the person who's it kisses like another person and then they're it. Yeah. I don't think I would like this game. No. Don't be like randomly <laughs> kissing me. Um, so it's like, imagine the worst game of Kiss Chase times a million. Picture for a moment those terrifying... Um, the most terrifying of magical creatures, the Dementors, cloaked in dark hoods with slimy-looking, decayed hands, and shudder. No eyes. Which blah, makes me yeah. legitimately shudder. Um, imagine them advancing towards you, causing the air to freeze, and bringing all of your worst fears and traumas to life. Then imagine them clamping, clamping their jaws on your mouth and sucking out your soul. Ugh. Horrifying, isn't it? I just imagine, like, I don't know if you guys have, like, a worst kiss, I, but I do. And, like, think of your worst kiss, but, like, this. Oh! Uh, oh, uh, my God. It's oh, horrific to think MG. about. Yeah, yeah. All, all my smooches <laughs> with Meg have been wonderful. 
I, I, can't, I can't say that um, all of my smooches have been wonderful. But yeah. Blah. It just makes you like the thought of like, I mean, I guess it is a kiss, but like it's, it's clamping its jaw yeah. on your mouth. Yeah. Like eating your face essentially. And that's not good. Nobody wants that. So, what are the effects? So, when Harry first heard about the Dementor's kiss in Prisoner of Azkaban, he assumed it was a curse that killed. And, to be honest with you, I didn't remember this until this reread, that, like, I thought you did die. Like, I must have skimmed over it as a kid or whatever. Um, Because I'm like, oh, no, you, like, get the Dementor's kiss and then you're, like, dead. But it is so much worse than that. So Professor Lupin explained to Harry that it was um, possible to exist without your soul, but that's all it would be, existing, not living in any sense of the word. You were effectively an empty shell. And I'm like, I just... It Think sounds about real-time horrific. life. Yeah. People who are literally just going through the motions. Like, it's sad. Yeah. 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 It's just, it's just crazy. Crazy, crazy, crazy. Um, and then, like, <coughs> in the article, sorry, <clears throat> it also talks about, um, they they talk about the Dementor's kiss again um, with Barty Crouch Jr. because they, like, he gets sentenced to the kiss. And it's so horrifying that, like, McGee even has trouble describing what happened to Barty Crouch Jr. Like, after he got the kiss. And Harry's like, it's all right, like, I already know, you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. Um, it's just, it's crazy. And then there's some other articles on Pottermore um, about Dementors, which is kind of cool. So one is um, why Dementors are the scariest magical creatures. Mm. Which I'm like, if you think about it, like... That meant that... Imperii. Because, like, it's literally the stuff of nightmares. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. So there's a whole article on that. You guys can read that. It's it, We'll post it on... Um, Facebook page and such things. Yes. But, like, even, like, really, really, like, thinking about what they look like, that's terrifying. To me, at least. Like, yeah. you have a gross face, probably rotting like your hands are, no eyes, but, like, sockets? Uh, uh, no, thank you. And then you're, like, mm-hmm. reliving your worst fear and, like, all of those emotions are put to the surface? No, thank you. Um, and then there's another um, article on Pottermore, and it's behind the scenes, and it's Dementors. And I really like that they do this, and Megan was talking about it with um, werewolves, because I like to know, like, how they do things and how they've created, um, like, different different aspects of the, uh, like, story and everything. Mm-hmm. And so this one, it says, the visual development um, artist on the Prisoner of Azkaban designed a veiled skeletal shape that could suggest some anatomical frame when the Dementors glided or hovered in the air and swathed them in shroud-like black robes that hung from their skulls. Yeah. Did Joe ever, you know how she had sketches, did she ever sketch a Dementor? Like herself? Oh, you know what? I don't know. Um, I think she did. I'm sure. I'll look. Um, I think it was my... really, it just looked like a like a cloak. Yeah. Okay. Right. Uh, I couldn't remember cuz I know she like drew like Snape and a bunch of other stuff, so. Yeah. Okay. And it says the the creature designers worked closely with the costume department who experimented with an assortment of fabrics that could convey a floating effect. Typically filmed in lowly lit scenes, the Dementor's coloration could not be solely black or else they would disappear into the background, so a combination of dark grays and blacks were used. Yeah. The designers referenced embalmed bodies, oh, so yeah. weird, um, whose wrappings were rotting and coming off. And oh, added, they had to look at that! Yeah, overlaid texture to the Dementors that gave the appearance of layers of decay. Oh. It's just... Their intention to detail serious, is just yeah. crazy. That's some serious, like, um, studying or whatever yeah. that I'm looking yeah. for. My I brain's not working. Side, <laughs> side note, I don't think that she has drawn a Dementor. No? I, no, I'm not able to find it. It's usually not pretty either. easy to find her sketches. She's... I don't think um, she Okay. So, and then it goes on to say, like, how we know the Dementors don't talk or anything. So they, they only need a mouth, um, like, opening to drain happiness from their victims. So movement was the key to communicating these chilling, menacing creatures. The filmmakers had hoped to bring the Dementors to life with a practical effect. They shot tests 
of fabric-covered Dementors models using different wind and lighting effects and ran the film backwards or in slow motion. I love when they do stuff like oh, that. that's cool. Um, really cool. Yeah, they did that with Star Wars as well. Um, yeah, and um, but they weren't satisfied with the results, so the puppeteer was brought in to test the same ideas, this time in an underwater environment in hopes of portraying a slow and forceful creature. And these tests captured what the filmmakers envisioned, but it was realized that using this process would make it difficult to repeat the same motion. And it was decided that Dementors needed to be computer generated. So the footage of the wa- underwater test was an important reference tool, and the digital artist expanded on it with effects that gave the Dementors their own realistic gravity, making them stealthy and unearthly. So I think that's great. Like, Megan, again, we, we talked about um, how they tried to do everything practically, and then they ended up using CGI. At least they great. tried. Yeah, yeah. like... And, like, and those trials made the, you know, it gave them an awesome thing to work off of for the CGI. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so. I think that's really, like, they use it as a really useful tool. Yeah. So that's pretty cool. All right, so back to um, real-time <laughs> life in the Harry Potter world. <laughs> so Harry's drowning in the fog of Dementors, and he thinks he might see a silvery light growing brighter and brighter. And then he feels himself fall forwards onto the ground. So he's now face down, too weak to move, sick and shaking, and he's being blinded by the light that is illuminating the ground around him. And I really, when I was typing this, it was like, blinded by the light. I almost said that. (laughs) (laughs) You're welcome, everyone. Um, So the screaming had stopped. The cold that was surrounding him was slowly dissipating. Um, And then there was something that was driving the Dementors away, and it was circling around him, Sirius and Hermione. So the rattling and sucking sounds of the Dementors were fading, um, and the Dementors were leaving. Thank the Lord. So with all of his strength, Harry lifted his head up and saw an animal. I don't know why I said it like that. An animal. (laughs) I like Um, animals. (laughs) So he sees an animal in the light galloping away across the lake, and he tries to make out what it was, and he says it was as bright as a unicorn. And, like, when I was... (coughs) <coughs> dying slowly <coughs> when i was re- reading right. this part and i was thinking to myself i'm like i know what it is because i know what his patronus is right but we don't and like the the thought of like it galloping makes me like think of you know like a horse or a unicorn or like a stag right um so it's like crazy that she's like here's a hint of what it could be yeah. oh unicorn here's another hint like it's a Something it's a big that can animal gallop. <laughs> mm-hmm. a cow <laughs> it could be anything it could be a human on all fours a I'm just kidding. <laughs> so harry was um fighting to stay conscious it cantered to a stop by the shore on the opposite side of the lake um and harry sees someone welcoming it back they were raising their hand to pat it and that someone looked very familiar but it couldn't be could it could it so I don't know. Harry didn't really know if what he saw was real, and he didn't have much strength left in him, and his head hit the ground as he fainted, and then that's the end of Le Chapitar. Yes, Megan? Um, I just wanted to say how much I love the part in the movie where, like, Sirius's soul almost leaves mm-hmm. him. Yes! They did so that good. so good. It was how it's so like, good. You can see the terror on his face, and then all of a sudden it's nothing. <sighs> yeah. I Very like, sad. um, I, and re rereading in this part, like, and even doing my notes because I'm so engrossed in, like, I've seen the movies a million times where, like, it doesn't seem in the movies that it's by the lake. And so, like, I had to mm-hmm. go back and be like, because it just, it, it feels like they're in the middle of the forest just by, like, a body of water, not like, yeah. Um, yeah. Really cool. Um, well, I think that they are on, like, the, a different angle of the lake than we're used to seeing, aren't they? It looks, it just looks so different. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. it looks different in the movie than I would have thought. You know what I mean? Right. Yeah. But Going back and reading it, different. I'm like, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. And then um, there's other thing. Oh, with Harry at the end when he was like, he wasn't sure um, if that's what he saw. Like, I know when there's times where like I'm ridiculously tired. And, like, say someone, like, I've had people call me, like, and I'm dead asleep in the middle of the night, and I wake up, right? And um, and I'll have a conversation with them, go right back to sleep, and then I'll be like, the next day, I'm like, was that a dream? Like, that's kind of how I feel like he is when he thinks he sees who he sees. Like, 
Yeah. Did I really see it? Like in my head, I'm like, did I really have that conversation with them? Like, what did I say? Like, yeah. Did did I really see him? Because he's so exhausted and he's no strength left, and he's like almost passed out. And a second later, he is. So like, yeah. I totally get the next chapter. He's like, I don't know. This is what I think I saw. Right. So. Yeah. I mean, crazy, crazy, crazy. Makes sense. Yeah. All right. That brings us to the lightning bolt round. So I have a question. I had to type it while, while I was there so I didn't forget it. The word I was searching for earlier with you was that was some epic research that they did as far as the designing of the Dementors with looking at the corpses, right? Mm-hmm. Okay. Research. That's very research. Disney-esque. Yes. That makes Disney me think. I, research. Yeah, yeah, I watched a lot. Um, when they were making... Um, Rescuers Down Under, when mm. they were drawing all the animals, they had all of them, like, in front of them, like, the kookaburra and everything. Like, yeah. that's interesting. Anywho, that's on Christmas tape, by the way, Sarah. <laughs> <laughs> Christmas tape. Start! Okay. Do you think that the Dementor's breath changes to what their victim would fear or hate? I like that idea a lot. A lot. I oh, like, you're welcome. I like I'm not that. Sister. <laughs> You think so? I could see it. Possibly. I could see it. Like, I I could think of of it being, like, um, the decaying, like, something you already hate. Like, would decaying lettuce smell like anything? Like, that could be, like, something that would make (laughs) Megan want to vomit. You know what I mean? I was legit gonna say, like, mine would be, like, old corn dogs. (laughs) (laughs) You. Corn dogs are delicious. They are. Like, I don't know what mine would smell like, or... Is that what it smells? Well, yeah. yeah. Well, my next question is, if so, what would your Dementor's breath smell like? Mine. Corn dogs. But it had or, to be, like, rotting something. Or, like, city trash. You know that city smell? Mm, city yeah. trash! Yeah. <laughs> Opposed to country trash. <laughs> <laughs> country the- trash just turns into manure. Right. City trash sits on the sidewalk and gets <laughs> cooked in the city heat. turns into manure. <laughs> Oh what do you think happens, man? I don't know. I'm not a country folk. You tell me. I'm trying to think. Works. <laughs> I think mine would legitimately be like human feces or something. Oh, gosh. Poop breath. Mixed with like burning flesh. Oh. And to be honest with you, all of these things I've smelled a lot. Yeah. Decaying flesh has a certain smell. I've never or smelled like it. Vomit. <laughs> Yeah, it does. Yes. This I don't know. You know that like conversation. That like musty basement smell, but Blah. like kind of million. Yeah. Yeah. Or my sister's dog's breath. Uh. <laughs> what about you? This is awful. Lettuce. Rookie's breath smells really bad. Oh, it does. It's the worst out of all of our cats. No offense, he's super cute and adorable, but. He needs like to brush his fangs. Fish. He needs to brush his fangs. He ate some rotten fish. <laughs> oh my god. Give the cat some nip. See what happens. <laughs> cat nip. Oh, they love it. Getting wild. All right. Any All other right. lightning bolt questions? I have a question. Okay. Out of every single person there, who would you want to be in that moment in Wrong. this chapter? <laughs> No, I was going to say Ron or Snape. Oh. <laughs> Honestly, probably Snape. Just because, you, because Snape doesn't time. have a painful broken leg. All he did was yeah. get knocked out and he's just yeah. floating. But I wonder, do you think he wakes up with a headache because he was hitting his head coming probably. out of the um, yeah. thing? Yeah. I'd, I'd want to be the Willow. Oh. It's not a person. What about Crookshanks? Per- yeah, I'd be Crookshanks. I mean, he did get blasted back, but no, he's fine. He's but then resilient. I'm just snoozing. Where do you think he went? I think he got knocked out, too. I think he... Yeah, yeah I think that he... he... Like, where did he go after he woke up? Did somebody scoop him? Like, where is he at? Did what did Snape him? do? Snape's not Snape scooping no cat. Oh, I bet you, like, there's an entrance into the castle for, like, their familiars. You know what I mean? Like... Your cat can, if your cat wants to wander, the cat's going to be able to come back inside Hogwarts. Like, it knows that, like, that's, uh, yeah, maybe. He, like, wakes up. Maybe Minerva uses it. Maybe they knock on Minerva's door and they're like, what up, McGee? 
Can you let me in? in? <laughs> Do you think McGee and Crookshanks like hang out as cats? Probably. I would hang out with cats. Crookshanks is smart enough that McGee would like appreciate him as a cat, you know? Yeah. 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 Do you think they have conversations? Probably. Kitty conversation? What do you think they talk about? Maybe they talk about the best hunting areas in the castle for mice. <laughs> Saw a bird today. I almost got it. I almost got it. That red dot still can't catch it. <laughs> You're gonna always chase that elusive red dot. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Tried some nip today. It was I. Right. Nip for life. <laughs> nip what? Like catnip? Is yes, catnip. <laughs> nip what? <laughs> Well, every time I hear that, I think of, like, your child. (laughs) (laughs) Welcome to Nip City Party, for one. (laughs) Uh, What other questions do we got? What are we thinking here, guys? Mm -hmm. I don't have an answer to this. Would would you have... Go ahead. I'll forget mine if if you go first. Go ahead. What do you think Hermione's last thoughts are on before she passes out? I really hope Harry knows what he's doing. <laughs> <laughs> I should have kissed Ron. Because ah! uh, now a Dementor's going to kiss me. <laughs> <laughs> My first kiss is going to be with a Dementor. <laughs> no! What would her Dementor's breast smell like? Failure. Burning, burning book pages. Book pages. <gasps> I was gonna say wait. burning parchment. That's so <laughs> funny. <laughs> wait, 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 Timothy. What did you just say? Same thing as you. Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> We're not allowed to hang out anymore. Yeah, uh, that's true. <laughs> but like, I just think like that would break her. You know what I mean? Like a burning book. Yeah. Like that hurts yeah. me just saying that. To be honest with you. Yeah. All right, Megan, what's Megan, your question? What I forgot. I, I don't remember. Are you serious? <laughs> yeah. All right, let me oh, think I know. Happened. Would you have run after Sirius and Lupin into the forest? Yeah. Probably. Heck nah. <laughs> well, I will say, if I'm Snape, no, I'd be unconscious. <laughs> right. Well, um, also, why do you think Sirius... Like, what was Sirius going to do running after him? Shouldn't he have just let Let him go? go. I think he was chasing Peter. I think he may have been chasing Peter. Peter went into the forest? Yeah, Peter scurried into the forest. I know. I didn't... Did it say the forest? Yeah. Well, it said into the grass. And then Harry's like, Peter got away. And Sirius is like, peace. For some reason, I always picture Peter going straight back the way he came past Hagrid's hut for some reason. That's just... Hmm. I don't know. It's always been in my head for some reason. Head cannon. Hey. Head cannon. Head cannon. Yeah. Um. God, that's like sad, you know? This is like a sad chapter where like yeah. nothing yeah. really happens, but it's really sad. It's yeah. a really short transitional chapter. Like yeah. it's essential to the story and it had to get out, but it didn't need like this long right. explanation of things. <laughs> And an insight into my head where I'm writing notes in my books where it's a little section where it's like, oh, it's too late. Peter transformed. He's running off to the grass. I wrote a swear. (gasps) (laughs) Well, not a nice one. Oh, darn. Oh, Oh, darn. darn. Dagnabbit. Dagnabbit. And I like that, like, with um, Ron's thing. They're like, what did he do to him? His eyes were only half closed, his mouth hung open. He was definitely alive. They could hear him breathing, but he didn't seem to recognize him. And I underlined, I don't know. And I I don't know why I did that. What uh what spell do you think that was? Maybe like a really weird confundus spell? Mm. But like a like a like a hardcore like one. Like a mean one, not just like yeah. confuse you like you're messed up. Yeah. I think maybe like the next level of stupefy. <laughs> Super Super <intensive>. Megafy. <laughs> Super duper <fi. laughs> Oh gosh. All right. Why did no one go like Akio Rat? Boom. Can you know. do that though? But like, what if you get an other other rats? That's fine That's as long as you get Peter. Specifically said Akio Scabbers. All these rats come flying out of the forest. <laughs> It'd be 
feel like that day we were at the beach. Which one is it? I feel like that day we were at the beach with the seagulls. <laughs> Swarm. Oh my gosh, yes. Just cage them all up. Which one is it? Don't worry about it. You got do all you the think that um, in that moment, do you think Sirius wanted to die, like didn't care? No, I think because of Harry, he didn't want to. Yeah, because of the series of events. I but I bet you, like, to. at this point, he knows that he, like, Harry can't live with him because Peter's gone. That's his only reputable source. No one's going to believe him, you know? Yeah. Like, I bet you they I all know. knew it was, well, Harry maybe not, but um, I bet you Sirius knew it was over. But it's not <sighs> Harry to the rescue. And some Do random think... person we don't know yet who cast the Patroni. <laughs> That looks like a unicorn. Do you guys think that, like, what do you think Sirius's last thoughts were with the Dementors? At least I'll see James. Probably on Harry. Oh, Katie. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, that's really sad. <laughs> I'm gonna cry a little bit. I, I would think on Harry and how he, it was a missed opportunity. Yeah. Oh, that's but like maybe. I, I think Sirius would. Th- I think Sirius has a lot of regrets, even though like regrets. you sh- you shouldn't live like that, but he mm-hmm. definitely does, unfortunately. Yeah. And I think that's probably what would be taking over his thoughts right now is all his regrets, unfortunately. Uh, his regrets. Yeah. Yeah, like the guilt. Yeah. I wonder, like, he probably would have been like. I'm glad that I got to see Harry as, like, more grown. Mm-hmm. And every time, like, even, like, when I was re um, reading and, like, with my notes, uh, every time, like, I'm like, I wonder, like, how they feel. Like, how did he feel seeing Harry for the first time? Like, now. Because, like we've said, and we're going to see really in the next chapter, like, he looks just like his dad. Like, Dumbledore even says at the end of the book, he's like, you do look extraordinarily like your father, yeah. except for your mother's eyes. So, like, I wonder, like, he he spent the last 12 years of his life in prison and probably dwelling on the fact that he genuinely believes that he got his friends killed. Yeah, you know, he thinks right. it's his fault. And then you see your best friend, and it's just, like, it's just got to, it's just emotional. Yeah. Sorry to bring the whole mood down, guys. It's all right. <laughs> And then shortly, you too will be dead. <laughs> Yikes. Sad, yeah, man. unfortunately, Sirius really doesn't get that much time. Even, mm-hmm. I mean, like, even it, you know, even after this book is over, he, I mean, he gets time, but. Yeah. 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 I like wish, I wish they could have had more time, like more quality time. But even at the same time, like, I don't know if it would really been, would have been good for Harry. Because he wasn't always True. had... Um... He wasn't a good influence always. Yeah, because again, like, he saw him as James, I think, a lot yeah. of times. Last one, James. Yeah. Like, uh, I can see him, like... Sad. Yeah, yeah. It's very sad. Okay! <laughs> <laughs> now that we're all sad and grabbing tissues... Let's go to the fan story. Yeah! Fan story, fan story, fan story! <laughs> So this week's fan story comes from a special shout out thank you to Mr. Ezra Kirk because these are two of his students and they wanted to share their story with us. I think that they're just, um, like he tutored them over the summer. Well, still. He was teaching them something. Right. (laughs) True. (laughs) So he's an educator. We support educators ish. Not really. No, I'm just kidding. Tiffany's not paying attention. You can I would say love it. So much she's ignoring me. <laughs> I'm listening to you. So this fan story comes from Grace and Isabella. So they say, hello, two sisters here. We were just put into the Hufflepuff house, and we think it represents loyalty, compassion, and values trust. Heck yes, it does. The loyal- <laughs> loyalty aspect of it is really important to us because we are triplets, and we like to stick together. We also mm-hmm. like that our common room is located next to the kitchens. I like we love food. Our dad is a chef. We love trying new foods, oh. and we would do our best to make good friends with the house selves in the kitchen. We, we could come up with some really cool recipes. Perhaps we could even help out with puff pastry, <laughs> which we need to bring back for sure. I was going to be like, what's that? <laughs> <laughs> it sounds like they might need a little help. You're absolutely right. Our dad also, is... though, 
people probably don't know what it is because we haven't put it out there yet. Yeah, I know. Well, oh. <laughs> Our dad is constantly forcing us to try new things. Ostrich? MREs? Oh what are MREs? Uh, so, alligator, frog legs, cow tongue, crickets, duck, lychee fruit, gooseberry, gooseberry, dragon fruit, and the list goes on and on. We love trying new things. Yes. Have you guys tried any of those things? Dragon uh, fruit? <laughs> I yeah. almost tried alligator, but dragon I didn't. Fruit. But dragon fruit, yeah, it's delicious. Dragon fruit's yummy. I don't think I've had dragon fruit, but I've had frog legs, cow tongue, and duck. I've had MREs. Oh, duck I've tried. I like duck. Frog legs were good, too. Cow tongue freaked me out just a little bit. It wasn't bad, but I psyched myself out of eating it. I don't think I've eaten an MRE before. I don't think so. They're not that bad. Yeah. Were you there for the discussion that they're now making pizza ones? I was there, yes. All right, you can finish the fan story. <laughs> I just like, you can tell, I like talking about food. <laughs> yeah. Uh, our first experience with Harry Potter was when we were five years old. Our mom dressed us up as Hogwarts students for Halloween. We really remember reading the books and watching the movies right before we went to Orlando. We That's had... a cool mom. Sorry. Yeah. Cool mom award. Yes. We had to I'm finish... not a regular mom. I'm a cool mom. <laughs> We had to finish the books before the trip. Also, extra cool, Mom. It made the trip so much more meaningful. We love reading the books and watching the movies. We are excited to watch the Fantastic Beast movie coming out this November. Me too. Another really cool thing that we like about being in Hufflepuff House is that in order to open the common room, you have to tap out out a rhythm on one of the barrels. Our brother is a drummer, so we would rely on him to make sure we always got in. Don't worry, we feed him, and he's our taste tester. (laughs) We love to drum on anything. We love that if you get it wrong, it will blow up on you and cover you in vinegar. Fun fact, the founder of Hogsmeade is a Hufflepuff. Oh, cool. Very cool. Katie and Ezra are our favorite hosts. Yeah! Hufflepuff pride! <laughs> Nothing <laughs> <at all. laughs> Mr. Kirk told us about your podcast, and we are excited Mr. to Kirk. listen and learn more about Potter. Thanks so much, Isabella and Grace. Yes, thank, thank you. For you. Your oh, that's cute. That's cute. It's so cute to hear someone call him Mr. Kirk. I know. <laughs> Shout out to Mr. Kirk. Shout out to you guys, and thank you thank for yourself. spreading the pride of Puff. Puff Pride. Puff Pride. I really want them to write us back and tell me how Mr. Kirk is as a teacher because I know how he was in high school and in middle school. So <laughs> give me a little look <laughs> out on that. I'd like to compare. <laughs> they also shared in their email to us some theories about um, Fantastic Beasts and Crimes of Grindelwald, which I think I will save for yeah. some yeah. upcoming Our... episodes. But so yeah. hold tight, girls. we have some plans for Crimes of Grindelwald coming mm-hmm. up here. Yes, what is that exactly? Who's Grindelwald? No, what are the crimes? We'll find out. We're not sure. I can't wait to see them because I'm terrible. <laughs> All the crimes. Right. Ooh. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All Swish right. and Flick Podcast can be found on all the different social media channels. We're on Facebook at Swish and Flick Podcast. And Twitter and Instagram at Swiss Flickcast. <laughs> um, you can also subscribe to us on YouTube. Uh, we're just Swish and Flick Podcast on YouTube, so go and subscribe to our channel. Um, you can support us on Patreon and get exclusive access to the Felix Files, which is our bi monthly bonus episodes. You can find us on there at patreon.com forward slash Swish Flickcast and choose your support level. And thank you again to all of our patrons. We love you, and you make this podcast possible. We appreciate yep. your support. And we do. Thank you to all listeners. Yes, because yes. you're all yeah. amazing. I don't. Want, we don't ever want anyone to be like, "I'm not a patron. I feel so bad." It's okay. Don't. We still love you. Yeah, we appreciate everybody. Um, so... I'm. I'm not even a listener or a patron supporter. So. <laughs> <laughs> Lastly, make sure that you check out our website, swishflickcast.com, to check out all of the info on Swish and Flick compiled into one place, along with all of our merchandise. Hint, hint. Keep on a lookout for some merch. Just, that's all I'm going to say. Holidays are coming up. Mm. Holidays be coming. Buy, buy your friends or yourself, you know, you, everyone buys themselves a Christmas present. Get yourself a t-shirt. They're nice. <laughs> they oh, are, my. actually, they're soft. 
I enjoy yeah. I enjoy all of mine that I have. Mm-hmm. Or a nice sweatshirt. I like our crew neck. Do I have one from this website? I don't think so. I, I don't hoodie. either. I need nice. one. Order it. The hoodie <laughs> is really nice, and I'm not a hoodie person. It's nice and soft. Yeah, it's it cozy. Yeah. And oh. I almost said winter is coming, which it is, but it's really going to be getting colder now, so I can't wait to, like... Look Where? again, live in like my switch and flick stuff. My mom's been wearing her like she has a long sleeve t shirt, has been wearing it constantly. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> she went to Target it today. I do believe she had it on today when I saw her. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Marty just sent me a slew of uh, emojis, so I'm taking that as he needs help. So, <laughs> <laughs> well, um, well. <laughs> do, Tiffany, do you have anything you want to plug at all? Uh, currently living life. Yeah. That's good. Um, yeah. With Diddy Bears been with me the whole time. Oh. And, and Alanis thriving. She's good. chubby. She As is. babies Her should be. Are when this comes out, cute. you're going to go be already back at work, Tiffany. I hate to bring it down even more. I'm sorry. I love you. Mm-mm. It's over. <laughs> <laughs> no, we're good. We all Mallies are good. This um, O'Malley. <laughs> what are you trying to say? <laughs> I can't speak for you. <laughs> um, so since this is coming out on October 7th, I'm just going to plug my social media because if you want to follow us on our trip that we're currently on while you're listening to this, just go and follow me at Meg's Mouse Tales. Meg's Mouse Tales. Go make sure that you follow Swish and Flick on Instagram, because I'll definitely be posting on there, at Swish Flick Cast. Follow us on Main Street 9 and 3 quarters, which is at Main Street 934. And Katie probably will be posting, maybe too, at Mm -hmm. Skaterade 7. Mm -hmm. So if you want to follow us along on all the cool stuff that we're doing that's Potter-related over in the UK. It's like 97% is Potter-related. Yeah, we have like half of a day that's Disney-related and maybe a half a day in London that's just like general London tourist stuff. But other than that, it's like basically all Potter. So we'll be posting a lot so you guys can follow along and see everything that we're doing. Um, And then whenever we get back, we will make sure to share our like full itinerary with you guys for anybody who's trying to plan a trip over there and wants some help and advice that's if we so. come back because we might just fall in love with it and stay over we there. might just move there yeah well you can't come back until you find me a british husband katie thinks <laughs> fine. do you want scottish british irish like specifics or just you so i don't mind but <laughs> the only thing is you gotta be careful with the irish only because i may be related to them <laughs> The chances are very true. slimmer <laughs> with the uh, English and the Scottish, where okay. I am, and Welsh, you know. I'm, like, kind of all of them, but Irish mostly, so. Well, you know, I'm excited if they're, like, to a go to Kilbane, my because apparently I'm them. British, so. <laughs> Do you know, did it tell you, like, where, or just in general where it um, was you it British? It broke it down to, like, British. Like, it had... Mm-hmm. UK, but then specifically like Great Britain in the UK. So like, English. but it didn't give you like where in mm-hmm. Britain. No, I don't think so. That's what I would want to know. Like, because I know I'm not 100 percent Irish, but I'm mostly Irish. <clears throat> so I'd want to know, and I know my some of my family's from like Mayo and Ackle Island, blah blah blah, whatever. But yeah, I, and like cool I think Westport. <laughs> <clears throat> so I'd like to know where where more so, and I've been to like where my 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 family grew up, like my great grandmother lived. But anyways, um, <laughs> Tiffany wants us to end. I can tell by her face. I know. I'm. I'm. I'm gonna plug my life, and then I'll be done. So, um, all I'm doing with my life, I'm gonna have new hair this time uh, Heck when this comes yeah. out. I can't wait. I really Both need a haircut. Yeah. Um. So that'll be a surprise. And other than that, I'm trying to find you know a new job and um. She bought all like my... I did today. Um, new job so I can travel more next year. Which I already have like five trips planned, so Ooh. we'll see if that Yeah, happens. we have a lot going on next year, even with Swish and Flick, let alone personal stuff. So With Swish and Flick? What's happening with Swish and Flick? Hopefully LeakyCon. Oh, that's right. New and York. who knows, like, yeah, New yeah, York New to York. see Chris Child, and possibly if they announce a celebration in California or something, who knows what's going to go on, so. Yeah. yeah. In like the span of three months, I'll be in New York three times. Not the city, <laughs> but the state. Yeah. Yeah, so it's a lot. We've got a lot going on. We're busy bees, but um, we're I enjoy busy it. Billy Wigs. Busy Billy Wigs. <laughs> you can follow me at O'Malley. 
on Instagram and Twitter. I don't post a crazy ton, but true. Fun times. You can't follow me. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> No, you can. Uh, you can write follow like, Tiffany no. on Swish and Flicks Instagram, and you can yeah. follow Tiffany by subscribing to our podcast. <laughs> yeah. True. <laughs> All right, that concludes this week's episode. Thank you so much for listening, and don't let the Muggles get you down. <gasps> Amazing! Just <Jumping> my voice. <laughs>